Fairbanks Focus is a locally produced public affairs program created in part by University of Alaska Fairbanks, KTVF, and Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation. Good morning. Thanks for joining us here at Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. I'm Annette Pearson, and today I'm joined by Camille Relatado and Jeff Jacobson of the Arctic Winter Games. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good to be here. Good to have you. Um, and so Fairbanks gets the privilege of hosting the Arctic Winter Games this March. Is that right? Absolutely. We are thrilled. Every 10 years, the state of Alaska is able to host the Arctic Winter Games, which is a, a premier circumpolar sport that brings in athletes from the nine contingents across the circumpolar north, from Russia, Yamal, uh, Sami, Scandinavia, Greenland, uh, Nunavik, Quebec, oh, wow. Northern Alberta, Yukon Territories, Northwest Territories, and Alaska. And so we have 2,000 athletes that are going to be coming to Fairbanks in March, uh, March, 20, March 15th through the 22nd. And as I said, every 10 years, Alaska gets to host these. Uh, games and this is a uh, the Arctic Winter Games that were games that started in 1970 and so every 10 years they've been in Alaska so in 1974 Anchorage hosted them and then Fairbanks hosted them in 1982 and then again in 1988 and then they went to Chugiak Eagle River in a in 96 Kenai in 2006 and then now here back in Fairbanks in 2014. Oh very cool and so uh, tell us a little bit about your guys' involvement. Camille, what are you doing for Arctic Winter Games? Well, my position is twofold, really. It's marketing and merchandise. So we are very unique in that we're, we consist of a lot of volunteer committees. So there's a lot of staff. However, there's not as much staff as our committees. There's 65 committees, and I sort of oversee seven to ten of those, roughly. Um, and my committees encompass publications, um, Ulu News, which is the daily publication that will come out every day of the games. There's merchandise, there's the website, um, we're also doing a mobile app. So there's, there's a lot that um, I do with regard to marketing, but then there's also the merchandise program. And there, these are just a few of the things that we are retailing, and we do have a store at 330 Barnett. Um, mm -hmm. But we have a full merchandise program as well. So that's a little bit about what I do at the games. Cool. And speaking of the Ulu News, this Sunday in everyone's daily news minor edition will be the first uh, Ulu News, and this is the uh, Ulu News of the uh, actually of the games that will be out every day during the week of the games. But this is kind of an early edition, kind of getting the community interested and excited about the games coming to town. We've had a tremendous response uh, on a, on the cover. Of course, is our mascot Robbie the Raven, and of course you see our little adorable little collectible stuffed uh, birds here. Uh, he uh, represents the spirit of the games, which is gr uh, Northern Spirit, Great Dreams. Or did I got that wrong? Great, great Spirit, Dream. Northern, great spirit Northern, Northern Dreams. Dreams. <laughs> I always get those tw <laughs> twisted. And he, he's a young raven who's kind of exploring what he wants to be in life and wh or what he's good at. Much like many of our athletes who are participating in the, in the Arctic Winter Games are sometimes the first you know, are new at some of the sports, and so they're kind of figuring out what they're good at. And so, Arctic Winter Games is all about building uh, skills and comp and uh, character, and also giving our youth an, an exposure to different cultures and languages and experiences that they wouldn't otherwise have in the Arctic North. Well, yeah, especially with you have people coming from all over the world um, into somewhere like as small as Fairbanks. Uh, what a what a cool experience that is for for our young athletes. Um, and you guys do all kinds of fun games and. Tell us a little bit about some of the sports people can, can participate in. Well, we have 20 different sports and cultural events, and I'm going to try to remember all of them, we, starting with alpine uh, <laughs> s uh, skiing, and then we have badminton and basketball, gymnastics, wrestling, volleyball, uh, biathlons, skiing, biathlon, snowshoe, cross-country skiing, curling, Dene games, snow snowboarding, and Arctic sports. In, event, in, in addition, we have cultural uh, performances because each of the teams coming bring a cultural contingency to share song, dance, and, and, uh, and uh, stories with, with the uh, sporting events. Oh, very cool. Well, tell me all about the Dene Games. What, what is that for people who might not know? Well, the Dene Games are likened to what we are familiar with, with Arctic sports, which is the Alaska High Kick. So the Dene games are the native games that are um, more from the countries like Greenland and, can mm. and Canada. So it's, 
it's comparable to that. Um, there will be competitors from those countries coming to compete in those games, such as um, I think it, the Snow Snake is one of the Denny right. games, and so there's a kind of a long channel, and they see how far they can shoot this javelin-shaped um, piece of wood, and it's a distance throw um, on the ground on the it skids on the ice. Um, there's also the stick pole. I believe that's Denny right. Games. And so there's a greased wooden dowel and two competitors stand next to each other and then they pull. Um, so they are likened to our, the, the sports that we know, like high kick and... Um, they also have a hand game too. There's where they hand games, like, right. It's kind of like a poker game where you try to get the other team to react to things that you do. And so it's, it's really fun to watch them because they're trying to do all sorts of funny antics to get the other team to break a smile mm -hmm. or to laugh. And it's just fun watching them going back and forth uh, in this competition. Yeah. That's, That's just kind of the really cool fun. thing about Arctic Winter <laughs> Games is that it's 20 sports and a lot of them are modern sports that we'd be used to like basketball and volleyball and indoor soccer. Yet at the same time, spectators can still see a lot of that culture and the history that comes from all of these contingents that come. So they'll get a little bit of everything, a lot of athleticism and sports and a little bit of culture mixed into it. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Well, and the snow snake, now that, like, I was reading online, I was checking out, so I was like, no, I'm not super familiar with that, but like 400 feet, 600 yes. feet? <laughs> like, if the conditions are just right and you throw it, that's, that pole can get across the ice. right across the ice, yeah. That just sounds crazy. <laughs> it is. And we have perfect conditions for Arctic sports <laughs> because we have dry snow conditions, and so for all of our outdoor sports, we really have a world-class a facility to offer the Arctic Winter Games. And so we recently had the International Committee and all the uh, chefs de mission, which are the kind of like the different sport teams managers, uh, come to Fairbanks and inspect our facilities. And they're just so pleased with um, what we have to offer the athletes and the participants, and also then the weather conditions. Because every year when we host skiing events, whether it's the junior nationals or, or curling events, people are really pleased with how how our how our climate and our venues blend together to, to provide the athletes the op optimum conditions for competition. Well, and there's really a, you know there's no there's no more better than Fairbanks, but of course you know <laughs> I might be a little biased. A well, little bit. we we really are the outdoor <laughs> sports central of Alaska. I mean, other uh, other parts of Alaska are beautiful to travel and do things in, but for for winter sports. Fairbanks is the place to be. And so, Jeff, how did you get involved with Arctic Winter Games? Well, actually, I am the uh, Fairbanks 2014 Arctic Winter Games Host Society president, and we're a, a nonprofit volunteer organization that is tasked with actually hosting the games on behalf of the of the borough and the community. And we're a nonprofit organization that basically has just a few um, paid employees, probably a handful, less than six, and then all the rest of our volu our volunteers. And so. To, in order to host the games, which is kind of the equivalent of Winter Olympics. In Vancouver recently, they had 2,600 athletes. Fairbanks will have 2,000 athletes. So you can imagine the magnitude of hosting an event like that. Well, we have you know, over 30 venues that we have to set up for. We have you know, dozens of events happening every day. And so we need thousands, literally thousands of volunteers to help us with whether it's serving meals, uh, taking tickets, setting up venues, closing, opening ceremonies, transportation, uh, you name it. There's something for everybody in the community to help out. And we have a great website at www.awg2014.org. That's uh, awg2014.org, in which you can go to our volunteer uh, uh, link and you can basically program specifically what it is that you want to do, what days, what hours, what frequency, uh, so that it's very tailored to individual availability and interest. And uh, it's a process that you, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to go through that depth, in-depth process. But once you're registered online, then, then you can be programmed and then there's automatic call-outs for events that you've, you've expressed interest in. So if there's something happening in December that you said you want to help out with, we'll contact you and set up a schedule for you to come in and, and help with that. Oh, very cool. Now, if because Fairbanks, there are a lot of people that live in a lot of little nooks and crannies in Fairbanks. If people don't have internet, is there another way that they can access or possibly could become a volunteer? Yeah, I mean, we have our office, um, at, again, at 330 Barnett Street, and our, our volunteer manager, Ashley Johnson, would be more than happy. Actually, any one of us would be more than happy to accommodate people who, are, who don't have access to the internet. So all they would need to do is just come down to our office 
and we can sign them up there. It's fairly easy. And or they, can, or they could call us too at 456 mm -hmm. 2014, and we could, you know, get a, a, a physical address or a mailing address in which we can mail applications to them or any information. So, you know, we want to be able to, you know, catch as many people's uh, abilities and interests to participate as possible. Awesome. So we have a physical location, a website, phone numbers. And that's 456 2014? 2014 yeah. is the Not number to planned. remember. Yep. <laughs> well, and so I know you said that they have lots of wonderful swag for sale do. down there at 33, 330 Barnett. 330 Barnett. But we're going to talk a little bit about something that you have to volunteer to get. Is yes. that right? Yes. This is the exclusive piece here. Um, we debuted this at Sept on our September 13 volunteer rally, which was presented by BP. And BP is the official volunteer program sponsor. So they get a nice right there. logo. Get a nice call out right there. Um, so as Jeff said, there is a large need for volunteers. You know, we really do need the entire community to come out and help. Volunteer. There's 2,500 <laughs> volunteers that are needed. Um, Nanette said this is a really cool jacket, and it is. This is the volunteer jacket. So um, in order to get this jacket, you would need to volunteer 12 hours during the games. And once you sign up online, we'll be able to um, keep track of you. So uh, not in the creepy kind of a way, <laughs> but you know, we'll be able to track your hours. Track your hours. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you all the cool, fun features here, and we're going to have our lovely model <laughs> try this right out. On. <coughs> model the jacket for you guys. Okay. So this was specifically designed for our weather conditions, and it's uh, made by a manufacturer that is very uh, well known, Loki, uh, for the brand is right back there. Loki for outdoor sportswear. So this is the volunteer jacket. There are multiple pockets here. You can actually put in a cell phone here in the media pocket. You've got a lot of room inside and outside. You can actually run your earbuds through here and listen to them if you're outside volunteering and just got to listen to some music. Um, the some, hand, of the, the the, some of the coolest features that we've got here on this jacket um, are the built-in mittens. And so if, if you just retract your hand, pull it back out, and that's, there you go, the built-in mittens. You'll it's never have to worry about losing mittens during the Arctic Winter Games because they're right there with you. Right, and they're very breathable, so you're not going to get really, you know, warm fingers or sweaty, sweaty. fingers. Or, and then the last part of it is, of course, this very neat built-in, and there she goes. She's Ninja. <laughs> 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 so there's also a built-in um, face gator in here. All in all, I mean, it's the real, it's a perfect package to be outside volunteering with the Arctic Winter Games. So again, this is the volunteer uniform, 12 hours during Games Week. Please sign up, awg2014.org, 12 hours to the Games. Um, there's also going to be a volunteer t-shirt as well as that. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to volunteering, you know, in addition to the jacket, the t-shirt. Um, you'll also get an exclusive volunteer pin. And after the games, there'll be an after party for the volunteers. And just the benefit of being in the back scenes of something as huge as the Arctic Winter Games. I mean, that for me will probably be the biggest takeaway is, you know, we'll get the back scenes um, kind of view on how this all came down. And meeting, you know, thousands of people from around the world is not bad either. So. No. And I, the other thing is that we have 30,000 hours of volunteers needed over in 7,000 shifts. So you can imagine the, the, the breadth and depth of activities that we need to, to have people sign up for. And you know, one of the things we want to do is, is recognize and appreciate our volunteers. So that's why they get to keep this wonderful uh, coat afterwards. And so you know, we'll have a sea of 2,500 coats out there <laughs> during the games. But afterwards, we'll have this legacy in the community of, hey, I participated. I was part of history when the games came back to Fairbanks in 2014. Right. Well, I want to thank Camille and Jeff again from the Arctic Winter Games for coming again today. This was awesome having you. And on March 15th, come on out to the Carlson Center. You can watch the lighting of the torch uh, for the opening ceremonies of the Arctic Winter Games. Uh, it should be a fantastic event. You can go see the, uh, the Cauldron Monument now. And uh, again, get out there and volunteer. Be part of the community. Uh, come check out the Arctic Winter Games starting March 15th. Um, next up, we have Sam Allen filling in for Annie Bartholomew. Welcome back to Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. I'm Sam Allen. Today I'm interviewing Stephanie from Elite Urban Fitness. Yes, that's correct. And how long have you been in Fairbanks? We've been in Fairbanks just a little over two years. Okay, and what separates you as a gym? 
from other gyms? And um, well, I, I really don't even think of us as a gym. I think of us more as a fitness studio. Uh, we specialize in personal group training. So there's at least one or two personal trainers with you at all times during the group class. So we're there monitoring what you're doing, checking your form. So really, you just have to walk through the door and we take over. Okay, and what sort of equipment do you use? Um, all sorts of equipment. There's no machines that you get on, um, but we use Dynamax balls. Um, we have a rig with bar and plates, uh, pull-up bars, uh, ropes, uh, balls to slam down, uh, push sled. We have some Concept2 rowers. Um, all sorts of really cool stuff. Cool. And I couldn't help but notice when you walked in here, you were wearing toe shoes. Uh, of course. What's uh, the idea behind that? Uh, well, um, it's basically like walking around barefoot, um, but it um, really helps build all the little muscles in your feet and get you back to how you really should walk naturally. So um, great for working out in, great for running. There's all different styles. Um, if you go talk to anybody that works out with this, majority of them have all gone out and bought some and they love them. So. But you don't like, you wouldn't lift weights in them because that could be. Uh, I do everything in them. What if you like drop it, a weight or something? It's not really any different. If I have a shoe on versus this, if I drop a weight on it, it's going to hurt. Okay. So. <laughs> Just work through the pain. Yeah. All right. And um, so what, what sorts of people come out? Like what types of people, like age groups? We have literally all ages. We, I do homeschool PE classes, so I have all the way from five-year-olds uh, up to, I think our oldest is about 68. Uh, in our regular group classes. So we've got um, you know, hockey moms, we've got elite athletes um, mm -hmm. in town, um, some big cross-country skiers that work out with us, um, you know, just all sorts of people. Lots of military come out and work with us as well. Cool. And um, where are you guys located? We are on University Avenue right next to the West Fred Myers. Um, it's at the corner of Rewalk and University. So super convenient. Awesome. Yep. And um, so I was reading on your website about this boot camp class. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me more um, about that? That's basically our regular group fitness class. Um, so some, it's, it's like a boot camp class, but it's just group fitness. Um, it's one hour in, in length. Um, you do a warm up. Uh, we work on agility, balance, coordination, uh, go into skill builder, teaching you specific techniques and skills. Uh, and then we do a workout that varies every day, so you never know what you're going to get. So when you walk in the door, it's up on the board, and you get to kind of look and get a little preview. And uh, then we end it with a cool down. Cool. Yep. Awesome. And um, so what sort of things uh, do people do that's like different than other gyms? Uh, well, I mean, in, in a typical gym, you're going to see people on a machine, uh, you know, doing weights and things with a machine. And in our gym, it's you, the machine, and you're pulling all the equipment, you're throwing, you're crawling, you're jumping. Um, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like a playground for adults almost. So. Awesome. How did the idea for Elite Urban Fitness come about? Um, my husband's active duty military, and uh, so when he was in Iraq um, back in 2009 and 10, he and one of his lieutenants started uh, a facility like this with the MWR, and it was super popular. And uh, he had already done this stuff with his soldiers for years and years. Um, so mm -hmm. when we he came back to the states, we were in Virginia for a little while. We worked with the YMCA there and did a program like we do here. Uh, and then when we got here, we waited about four months and kind of got settled a little bit and then started um, doing just morning classes. And then when we found a building of our own, we did a two-week uh, whirlwind renovation and there we, it was started. So. Wow. So yeah. how long have you been in Fairbanks? We've been in Fairbanks for two, just a little over two years. Um, and we've been doing this, it'll be two years in January. Okay. So, but we've been in our current location for a little over a year now. So what do you guys like open like five days a week? Uh, we are open six days a week. Okay. Um, so we have early morning classes. We're there at 5 a.m. Um, we have 5.30, 6.30 a.m. I do a noon class a couple of days a week. Um, we have a 5.30 evening class every night uh, and a 6.30 uh, evening class a couple of nights a week and then Saturday early morning. Cool. So. And what is what do you want to get out of this? What is your goal? For um, our goal is just to um, you know, help people uh, learn how to enjoy fitness and um, we are also are really big on the nutrition aspect and so we want people to make healthy eating choices um, and just have fun working out and be fit.
Cool. And yeah. All right. And uh, you were telling me earlier about, uh, you said class starts at 530? Yes, we have um, a class that starts at 5.30. We now come at 5 a.m. because we have a lady who's been working out with us for 18 months. She's absolutely amazing. She's one of those that um, is a true testament that if you stick with something and you're dedicated, you're going to see changes and get strong and fit. Um, she's a principal at Ileson, um, and she's just an inspiration to everybody um, in our facility. Um, so she needed us to come a little bit earlier this year since she got a job out at Ileson. So we come in at 5 a.m. Um, I don't always come at 5 a.m. Thank goodness my husband's the morning person. Yeah. And everybody that knows me, I'm not a morning person. Now, I have to be sometimes, but um, I prefer mm -hmm. to sleep a little bit past 5. So. Okay. So when you're working with people and teaching mm -hmm. these classes, what are some things that you do to motivate them? keep them going? Um, well, I mean, we're just encouraging them, you know, telling them, you know, you're doing a great job, you've got this, and, you know, uh, we do a lot of Tabata intervals, people enjoy that, which is um, 20 seconds of work followed by 10 seconds of rest, and you're working pretty high intensity those 20 seconds, so we're always saying, hey, it's 20 seconds, you can do anything for 20 seconds. Yeah, cool. You could too, if you came. Yeah? Yeah. So what if, uh, hypothetically, someone was wanted to gain like 30 pounds of muscle, right? Mm -hmm. What would what would your advice for them be? Um, well, I mean, you need to come lift weights, but um, our, our our main goal really isn't trying to build bulky muscles. We're just trying to get tone and fit and uh, build, you know, just bulk strength. You know, not bulky muscles. So, okay. Yeah. So, if someone wants bulky muscles, then I would refer them to my husband. <laughs> okay. Because he's more into that. All right. He could help them. So what are some of the things that are happening in the next couple of months? Uh, well, we just finished up a TRX workshop um, last week. We also, I failed to mention earlier, but we use TRX, which is a great tool um, for fitness, and also kettlebells are uh, two of our big things. Um, so we just finished up a TRX workshop. We also um, enjoy the yoga aspect, and mm -hmm. so we're actually partnering up with uh, Gretchen Nolan, and she's going to be coming out on, I think it's November the 2nd. We're going to do an EUF workout followed by a session with her. So you get kind of... Know, high intensity and then you get to relax and cool down. Okay, so I'm not 100% familiar with all those terms. What's that, TRX? Um, it's a suspension training system. Um, so if you would come out to Elite Urban Fitness, I'd be happy to show you. Um, kettlebells, have you ever heard of those? Either? Yeah. Okay, but yeah, we love those, use those all the time as well. Um, so just, um, but TRX is, it uses your body weight. It's a fantastic tool. It's perfect for beginners that are just starting out, but it also um, meets anyone's needs, even elite athletes as well. Super cool. tool. And if people want to find out more information about Elite Urban Fitness? Uh, well, they can go to our website, which is EliteUrbanFitness.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook page that's very active. Um, and they can call me and uh, text me. I'm always available. So. Awesome. Yep. And so, uh, so what type of people in the community uh, have you seen come through your doors? Um, I mean, we see everybody. Um, we sponsor the Ice Dogs, so their team actually comes and works out. Um, during the season with us, um, and so uh, we enjoy having them there and uh, love going to the games too. Um, so definitely have the ice dogs. And um, we have kids that are homeschooled that come from our homeschool PE classes. We do those five days a week, very popular class. The kids have a great time and they're amazing. Um, and then, like I said earlier, we have, I mean, just all sorts of people. I mean, from teenagers to college students to hockey moms and grandparents, you name it, we've got it. Yeah. So. We have lots of um, people who had never run before, and we started with Beat Beethoven in the spring. Okay. And uh, we actually had, I think, six people that finished um, the whole season running the Flint Series and then went and ran the mar marathon as well and had never run before until um, we started out in the spring. So, wow. Yeah, so some amazing accomplishments. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the stuff that you train the ice dogs with? Um, well, uh, we don't. Them. Yeah, we don't personally train them. Their trainer um, comes in and trains them, um, but they use our facility and all of our equipment, and we provide the space for them to have to be able to train as a team, which is important. Yeah. So, if someone was looking to get more involved, how would they go about doing that, and uh, what? How does the cost? compared to other gyms? Okay. In the area? Um, it just um, it varies on what 
the individual wants. Um, the first class is free because we want people to come try it out and make sure it's something that they're interested in um, and it's going to fit their need um, before they sign up. Um, so we don't want anyone to sign up a contract and then decide, oh, I don't really like this. We mm -hmm. never had that happen, but um, so first class is free, so come out and try it. Um, after that, you've got options. You can come two times a week, three times a week. You can uh, go in the unlimited plan. We also don't want people to feel like they have to be locked down into a contract, so we have options. You can do monthly, or you can do three-month or six-month contracts. Obviously, the longer the contract you sign, the more discount in the price that you get. And we want you to come, because if you come, you're going to get results. If you don't come, you're not. So. Could you tell me more about your website and the uh, services that you offer? Sure. Um, our website is www.eliteurbanfitness.com. So you can go there and all of the information that you need is there. Um, if you want to speak with me, though, you can call 907-370-7080. Um, you can also text that number as well. Um, sometimes I'm in a class, so I can't answer the phone, but I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Awesome. Yeah, and I was surfing your site, and I was amazed that it wasn't just like the classes that are being offered, but it was like it had pages on, of like nutrition information mm -hmm. and like kettlebell studies and stuff, and like. Right, we try to um, you know put down different articles and things that have good information. I also post things all the time on Facebook. Um, we um, are real big into nutrition and want people to eat just whole foods and eat healthy. Um, so um, you know we try to promote that as well. Um, we did a raw food challenge this summer that was really um, in oh, in wow. interesting. Um, we had a, probably I want to say 35 people that did a one week raw food challenge, um, mm -hmm. and so that was fun. Um, just to kind of try something new and see their take on it. I'm uh, myself a vegan, so I eat kind of that way all the time. Um, but it, um, so it was fun. But uh, we do that cool. as well. Um, oh, I'm so screwing up this. Oh, that's fine. So your f Facebook page, is that just Facebook.com slash Elite Urban Fitness? Yes, Facebook.com slash Elite Urban Fitness. Um, that's a great place to go because I'm always posting pictures and videos so you can see like real people doing um, what we do. So. Um, all right. Well, thanks a lot for being here, Stephanie. Right, thanks. Thanks for having me. And come to Elite Urban Fitness to work out. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow morning. Free class. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. I'll see you. All right. Well, that will do it for uh, this edition of Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. Thanks for tuning in.